Welcome back, listeners. You are here with us tonight, Supergirls, Jeannie Marie, yours truly, and Chief Supergirl, and on the Hero Whispers. The Hero Whispers is our podcast for Supergirls, which is a platform created to inspire and empower college women to launch from college to life. And tonight, we have a very cool, we're going to get lifted with Helen Dunham Reed. She is her own podcast host, which is amazing, and you have to check it out. And before I introduce her and have the pleasure of her company here, we are going to tell you a little bit about our show, just in case you're new and haven't been around to hear us. So the Hero Whispers we created to enable these women to share their voice, to share their story, um, these women that are launching, so that they can get out there and we can learn more about them and how we can help them. Because it's all about Supergirls. It's all about paying it forward and helping these young women with career and networking and personal branding. And so I love to give them the opportunity to talk about their lives, their challenges, their struggles, get it out there, uh, and their accomplishments, of course. And then I also like to have really cool women that can inspire these young women uh, with some of the things they're doing, like our guest tonight, Helen Dunham Reed, who is amazingly lifted. <laughs> it's her podcast is called The Lifted Podcast. I absolutely love that name. But Helen is here. Welcome to the show, Helen. Hey, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. And thank you for being on my podcast and, and being willing to be interviewed recently. I loved it. Oh, my God. I love being interviewed. I love talking about the mission. I love people with like minds like yourself. So it's, uh, it's empowering, inspiring. And that's what we're doing. So everyone, totally. let me just give you a little background on Helen. Helen is a wellness blogger, podcast host, singer, songwriter, and public speaker. An advocate for ending violence against women and girls, she served as the chair of UN Women's YP Committee in NYC for two years and has hosted multiple fundraisers to directly fund women and girls in need. Helen is the founder and host of The Lifted Podcast, a space to explore consciousness, holistic healing, manifesting, and becoming the best versions of ourselves. You can find her music and podcast on Spotify, iTunes, and more under Helen Denham. You can also head over to www.helendenham.com to find her blog and much more exciting adventures on that website, let me tell you. So Helen, <laughs> I can't believe you even have time, you do all these amazing things to come on the show. <laughs> so I'm super grateful. And the number one thing on my mind is, what inspired you to start the Lifted Podcast? And how did you get that amazing name? Where did that come from? Ah, well, thank you for that really nice introduction. So the Lifted Podcast, I'll tell you a little bit about it. So, well, my journey kind of started, I was just looking for ways to uplift myself and really heal myself internally and kind of rewrite my story for myself in college. And, you know, that was about six years ago. So I was listening to podcasts on similar topics. So I was listening to people like Abraham Hicks, Teal Swan, Lacey Phillips, the Almost 30 podcast. And I was using those podcasts to help myself get to know myself better. And it came to a point where I was like, there's so much more that I want to dive into and so much more I want to learn about the healing process and all of that. So I was like, how can I just ask these people these questions? You know, like, can I slide into their DMs on Instagram? Like, how can I get answers to what I, I want to know more about? And then I was like, okay, what if I just started a podcast? And at first, that was just a very daunting task to me. I thought that there was like so much that had to be done to even make that possible. I thought I'd need a whole recording studio. Like, it seemed kind of impossible at first. Um, but, you know, the best advice that I got from a friend of mine was, just start with what you have. You can't start with the intention of being perfect. You can't compare your first episode to someone's 100th episode and don't let that hold you back from just beginning. So do what you like can with what you have. And what I did have was I had a microphone. Uh, I had, you know, people in mind that I wanted to interview. I had skills with Photoshop. So I knew I could brand this in a certain way. 
And I just kind of gave it a go. And I just used GarageBand. I did a lot of research on YouTube and, you know, just Googled how how do you start a podcast? And step by step, I got it figured out. And, you know, I still have a lot of work to do on it, but I'm, I'm happy with, with where it is now. And I think for anybody listening who wants to start a podcast, like, just go for it. Just do the research. You know, of course, we don't know how to begin until we, until we do the research and just give it a go. So, and the name lifted, I mean, I was like, what feeling do I want to give people when they listen to this podcast? And the feeling was like feeling better. What's this feeling better sound like? It feels like being lifted. Um, and so that just kind of came, came naturally when I thought about the feeling I wanted to give people. That is phenomenal. I love that advice because it's like starting a business or anything. You can't do it unless you start, right? You got to start somewhere. And if you fail, you fail fast and you learn from it and then you keep going. And that's, I'm all about that. Like, I love how you just did. I love how you just jumped in. You got, you got to just jump in. Otherwise you'd be sitting on the sidelines <laughs> looking at your life, right? Like looking at watching the years pass you by. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, exactly. and I love that it was, it was a way to heal yourself that is like so introspective and so like amazing, right? A lot of people just heal themselves. They drink a glass of wine or something, you know, but oh, oh Helen's like, oh no, I'm starting you. a podcast. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to, you're like, you're like, woo, let's do this. So has it let's really, do it. has it helped you with some of the healing that you thought it would? Like, has it like met your expectations to this point? I mean, I, I know it's relatively new, but how are you feeling so far? That's a great question. Well, yeah, absolutely. I have learned so much about myself from having these guests on uh, because these, the people that I interview are people that I really look up to and that I've been following for a while. And, you know, I've learned to be a better listener from having this podcast. I look at people like Oprah and even Ashley Graham is one of my favorite podcast hosts right now as well. And what makes them so good at what they do is that they really can listen and absorb and give intelligent feedback. So it's taught me a lot about that. And it's just given me so many good tools for my tool belt, you know, learning about emotional freedom technique and tapping to like learning about past lives and astrology. Like there's so much knowledge that these wonderful people have to give us. And yeah, so I'm learning while the listeners are learning. Like I'm right there with them. I'm just coming up with the questions really. And furthermore, it's also given me a greater sense of confidence and self-worth because it is scary to put yourself out there like that. And, you know, I went through a lot of fear of, oh, people aren't going to like what I have to say, or they're going to think I'm self-absorbed and I just want to talk about myself. And like, I got into this headspace that was really just self-defeating in the beginning, but I was really able to work through that and just show up for the process. And learn that, you know what, people, I actually have a lot to offer here. And it's actually really going to help people. So getting out of my own way was definitely a big part of that process. So, yeah, I'm very happy with where it's at right now. I mean, the thing I need to work on the most now is consistency. So I've kind of just completed season one. And now I'm booking guests for the next round of interviews in the spring. So I think the challenge now is just showing up for the work and and being consistent with it and continuing to, to show up. Well, you're an artist in every sense of the word. So this is art and you know, you're creating it. And the fact that you're a singer songwriter, I got it. I got it. I mean, I have to hear about that and I'm, I'm hoping, I don't know if you'd feel up to it, but I'd love to hear you sing a bar. (laughs) I'll sing you a bar. I mean, (laughs) Let's see. What, what do you want to know about the, the songwriting experience? Oh, I mean, how did you get started with that? I would love, I mean, like my dream job, it'll never happen. That's why it's a dream job is to be a rock star singer tour. I mean, I was in a band in graduate school, but, and I, and they let me sing, but I, I can't really sing. I mean, it's not a talent. So the fact that you have that talent, I love that. I, I, I it inspires me and I love how people, like it's, it feels like it's like a natural thing when you're a singer songwriter, you know, it kind of like comes like maybe you started when you were little, I don't know. I'd, I just want to hear the story, like yeah. how, how you became that. Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, first of all, I mean, I think that singing is, it is a talent, but it also can be developed so much. Like a lot of people are just like, Oh no, I can't sing. Like, no, 
but you can, you know, it takes, um, <laughs> if you can like kind of sing along to your favorite song and kind of hit the notes, like you definitely can learn to sing better. It's just like any kind of craft, any kind of sport, even like you build that muscle and you practice, but it really started for me because when I was young, I would always journal. Like my mom really got my sister and I into journaling from a young age as a way of being observant of our thoughts and almost as a form of meditation. So I was journaling a lot. I loved to read. I would write poetry. I was always a theater kid. I loved singing. That was how I had fun. So it was just kind of this natural progression into songwriting. And then I had my first boyfriend when I was like 14. <laughs> and, you know, the heartbreak of my first love really got me to write my first song and like actually write to pour my pain into some kind of tangible form. And it made me feel so much better and it made me feel empowered. And I remember like my family coming into my bedroom and playing like my first songs for them. And they were very supportive. They were like, just do it, girl. Like whatever's going to make you feel good. So I ended up going to college um, for theater and music, but also arts administration so that I learned the business side of music because I knew I always wanted to be in the driver's seat and like know what was going on and, and understand how contracts and just the whole back end of the scene works. So that was great. And then I, let's see what happened next. Then I recorded a demo when I was in college freshman year, I asked for Christmas for a gift certificate to a recording studio. So over Christmas break, I went in and I recorded three songs for a demo and I just, that feels so good to me. Just like having that, you, you wrote know, those songs? CD. I you wrote, wrote those songs and I went in with my guitar and I just recorded them and I didn't even care if anybody ever heard it. I really didn't even put it out. It was just something for me to have to be like, you can do this. Like, this is possible. I needed to get the feeling of what it was going to be like to be in a recording studio. And I just was obsessed. I was like, this is where I want to be all the time. Oh my God. And I can totally relate to that. I would love that. Well, that's, yeah. why we have, that's why we have shows. That's why we do this. That's why we do what we do. Because it's the exactly. same kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. So it went from there into just like, I continued to write, but I didn't really know like how to go about getting, I didn't even know what a producer did. I didn't know that they were 50% of the process. They're the ones that like make your music into this radio friendly, you know, thing. Um, so finally I did like a, a couple little shows in college. I won like a battle of the bands thing. My, my confidence got boosted and my friend introduced me to my first manager. Um, Jay, who was such a wonderful person, and he was also like a, uh, he was like a personal coach. He was like a fitness coach, so he'd have me going on like runs while I was singing and like on the bike singing, <laughs> and just like, he gave me this real sense of hustle and was like, go for it. He introduced me to my first producers, so I understood what it was like to co-write with somebody and understand how to bring music to life. And then finally, just, I was naturally in like the scene in New York City, just going out to clubs and like dancing. And a lot of my friends were DJs. So I kind of got introduced to people that way. Finally did my first track with my friend G, who is a rapper. She's amazing. And I sang on a chorus for her. And she introduced me to my primary producer, Matt, who is like my <laughs> savior. I just love him so much. And since then, I've been working with Matt for like four years. Um, I can't believe it's been that long. I think wow. it's bad. That's crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, it's really just about, I mean, you and I talked about the importance of networking and getting out there, but it's like everything that has happened for me has come through just friends and knowing people and doing it for fun. And I mean, Matt, Matt and I really got along was, it's about finding someone you can really collaborate with well too, because he knows that I do best when I'm like, just writing and he's just making the beats. So he'll kind of put down a chord progression and I'll start writing in the background. And then after three hours of just kind of being in our own little world, we'll come together and we'll record and the song just kind of happens that way. So like the way he works is, is very good for me. So that's kind of how it happened. And then I just started to put it out on Spotify. iTunes did my first music video last year and it's been like a slow rise and I'm actually going through a whole rebranding thing now because it, all my music used to be under Denim, which is my middle name, but 